St. Vincent de Paul is like a full-time job. It's 24-7. This is our distribution center. This is where all the kitchenware, bedding, uh, clothing is housed and that's where it's dropped off and that's where it's picked up from. Well, we came in this morning and we have uh, sheets with uh, the people that need have all the list of what they, what they require. Find what we can and load it on the truck. So we've got a bed on the truck, a uh, kitchen table, a couple of chairs, a uh, shelf unit is a single person. We don't have enough dressers to give people dressers, so we give them a shelf unit. They put their clothes on the shelves. And uh, we didn't have a coffee table, but we found a basket that could work as a coffee table, and that's what we've done this morning for this order. We have a place that takes the calls, and they receive all our calls. We have a special number, and they send the calls to the area where that person lives. The call is sent to um, a couple of volunteers that go and visit. We do home visits. Probably one of the few organizations that does home visits. In normal times, non-COVID times, two of us will go to visit uh, the person who's called in with giving needs. We go in their home, visit them, look, look what's around there, talk to them. We don't do that now during COVID, so we do that by phone. Once the assessment is done for what the needs are, those needs are passed on to this place. Sometimes we don't have everything they ask for, but we do our best. Some conferences have food banks, so we also do that. Food is done on an immediate basis, per se. You know, when people are hungry, they're hungry now, they're not hungry next week. Because we now can't go in, we're not going into the apartments and carrying up four flights of stairs. They have to get someone to help them carry things in. This is a COVID thing, we normally we would. So uh, I called his worker two weeks ago and we were tried to do a delivery and he said, well, he's no one to help him bring it in. And I called him today and he says, he's, his dad is going to come over and help him carry stuff into the apartment. The ladies have put together the uh, small things, the toaster and uh, frying pans and towels into boxes. So we come over here, we get the, the, those boxes, which we call smalls. We load them on the truck and we get bedding for that bed. And now we're just gonna go off and deliver it to, to the person who needs it. Well, it has to be done. Who's gonna do it if, if each of these people here don't make the, make the commitment to to do this, to do this kind of work. Our faith, Catholic faith, teaches us that we, you know, we have to be concerned about our sisters and brothers and how they're, uh, how they're managing in life. Donations have gone down and uh, those, those kinds of things because people have other concerns and, you know, just the, it's just sort of cascading effect on the whole economy has affected organizations. I remember talking or hearing a conversation with someone that, you know, they were looking for help because they were $137,000 in debt. You know, that's beyond our capability, or, you know, that kind of thing, to de even deal with that kind of, a, even address that kind of thing. So it uh, it's, has its challenges and I'm sure it's going to continue to have challenges as this, the economic side of things continue to decline. Uh, actually, the kids' school referred us to them, okay. um, the St. Clements Elementary School. Okay. Uh, Miss Anna there, she's the family liaison, mm. and she helped us with this. That was earlier this year uh, when the pandemic first hit, actually just before the pandemic slightly. Okay. Um, we went through a separation and we kind of had nothing at home. So the school referred us to them and they've helped us with some of everything, like groceries, clothes for my kids. Uh, my daughter needed a computer to complete her schoolwork. It's been amazing and kind of sad at the same time. You know, it's hard to accept help, um, but they've made it just so easy. And we are very thankful for everything. Yes, we are. Oh, sure. yeah. I got yeah. this new coat because it's like you. Yeah. I got this coat from the um, Yeah, and you got a coat. Yeah. Yeah. So knowing that you're in that position that you can't do it on your own, especially when you have kids, it's really hard. But they, they make it, yeah, it's kind of embarrassing, you know? but they, um, they make it really easy on you. You know, they call, they check up, they, they reach out to make sure you're doing okay and offer support in any way that they can. I have actually friends, uh, 
clients that became friends. There's one particular lady that calls me mom. Their children call me grandma because we became very close. She was a single mom with two children and they needed a lot of help. And she wanted the help and she wanted to move forward. And so we kept helping and, and she's on her own now. She, she has a couple of degrees and she's done well. It's, it's, it's a good feeling, you know, when you bring stuff to a family uh, and uh, they say thank you, thank you, thank you. And sometimes some immigrants, they, they need you to come in and have a cup of tea. They have all these rituals and we have to say sorry. We've got other deliveries to do and we bow and we hug. We used to hug and we do all kinds of things. <laughs> I think as you, do, as you go through life, then you sort of realize that it's not all about me. It's more about others and, and me helping others. As, as, as our Catholic social teaching tells us, you know, that's, that's what we're supposed to do, help others. If it wasn't for people like St. Vincent de Paul, some of us wouldn't be able to make ends meet, right? So. I understand what my mom's saying because like, if, like, when they help us, but if we hadn't had their help, like, well, accepting their help is like, it's like m making them take our responsibility. So I understand that why that could be embarrassing, but mm -hmm. it's really, thank we're really thankful that they've helped us a lot.